What's up guys, how's it going? Hope you're well. Just wanted to share again a bit more of a longer video. It was actually about reading more books and I'm going to talk a little bit about the goals that I had. So finishing 2020 and going into 2021. So in 2020 I kind of had a few books that I read during the lockdown and in 2021 there obviously was a lockdown as well but I was more busy with my degree. I had other commitments in life and so I wasn't really sure how many books I was going to read. So very tentatively, I set the goal of reading 10 books a year. And at this point, the majority of the books I was reading were on the upper paperback books. And I think everybody at this point, you've all heard the advice like read more. There's so many benefits to reading. I can cover them in another video if you guys want. But I think the majority of you, if you've clicked on this video, you're probably interested in actually how to read more books. And I'm going to go into that. But like I said, I'm just going to go over a bit more context I think everybody can relate to this or at least most people can that you really want to read more books and you just don't really get time to and it's very difficult to find time because like I said if I describe my situation so I was studying I was just like I said doing a lot of other commitments I was working out and kind of at age 20 21 like reading just isn't top of you like as soon as you leave school almost like as soon as you leave primary school you just get so bogged down with work and so bogged down with so many other things you never really find time for reading but it's such a useful skill that I thoroughly recommend it but I really wanted to read so I said I'd read 10 books but I'd say so in the in the first few months of 2021 I read probably like two to three books and it was kind of looking like I'm probably going to meet this goal but I knew that it was kind of only really working because the gyms were closed a couple of other factors as well because basically because of the lockdown and the increased time that you kind of have to spend at home and you can't really go out or do anything so I knew that this kind of I'm on track at the moment mindset wasn't really going to last past these lockdowns so anyway I tried by their best I read a few books I think I read one on training uh, I, I, and I had started to read a few ebooks okay so I had started to read I think a couple of poetry books, a couple of Rumi quote books. Now, again, they might not be like the number of books you wanted, but it was just my habit to set 10. So that's roughly one book a month. So it, it would mean to me that I am in the habit of reading. That's really why I set that target. So I would say by about February, I was starting to read a bit more books because I got this uh, membership with Amazon. It was Kindle Unlimited, and basically you get access to a library of books. You can choose up to ten. And I'm not necessarily saying you have to get these memberships, but I'm just talking about my experience. And so, actually, this the process of the lesson I took home was by taking on ebooks as a form of reading books. I was able to read a lot more because, like I said, in the lockdown, I wasn't traveling that much and um at work or university or whatever there's always times where you're on your phone nobody wants to admit it there's always times on your phone where you're probably like replying to messages or like sometimes you just so many people when they don't know what to do they have nothing to do in that time i would recommend actually just sitting there and learning to appreciate the moment but if you can't do that if you have to reach for your phone and i've been there as well too guys it happens it still happens today sometimes at least do something useful with that rather than just like going on instagram oh, and then just tiktok and then what's happening you just circle through these apps or whatever i wouldn't recommend it so i'd actually recommend getting an ebook and you don't even have to like get these memberships get like so there's there's free public domain pdfs online there's free like there's so many free books on kindle as well free samples definitely recommend getting those as well and if you're with a university and you have like an open athens or something you can get so many free books papers as well i definitely recommend that but the point was by reading more paperback books i was definitely able to sorry not paperback by switching from so i still had the paperback books and i was still trying to read them in my free time that i dedicated to reading but i would say that the the ebooks was definitely like a big game changer in reading more books so by about i think by about april i was hitting like seven or eight books okay so halfway through the year and i've basically almost hit my goal so around april and may and june like life got a bit difficult with some other things that i'm probably not going to talk about but i think everyone can relate to like having an unexpected circumstance in life losing track of a few good habits that happens to everyone but anyway by about june july i was back on reading again i was reading the ebooks like i said using that membership and i would say i had probably got to about 
eight books, okay, eight to nine books probably, and I was closing in on the 10th. So by about halfway of the year, I'd actually achieved this goal, but I wanted to keep going off. I didn't want to just be like, okay, I've achieved 10, I'm going to stop now. Because like I said, the whole point of me setting the goal was actually to try and get myself to read about one book a month. And then from that, I'd be able to realize and accept and have proof that to myself that I was reading regularly and that's one of the habits I wanted to start at the beginning of the year. Well, I I was reading in 2020, like I said, but it's one habit I wanted to make sure was continuous in my life. So if you project that by about June, like, or July, halfway, we'd done 10 books. So by the end of the year, if I kept going out the way I was going, I should have got to about 20. But like I said, the title of this video is I exceeded my goal, I went from, like I said, I planned to read 10 books, in the end I read about 28, and I think it was actually more than that, because by the end of the year, I was getting through so many books, and there were so many books throughout the year as well, I think I read like textbooks and stuff as well, that I just didn't record on my Goodreads, but like I said, it was a good way of keeping track of the books I was reading, getting good recommendations on things I was interested in as well, so I easily like doubled and very closely and probably did triple but I don't have like the the thing on my Goodreads to show like definitely triple but 28 books out of 10 like definitely yeah that definitely exceeded that goal so that's why I'm trying to share these tips so I kept reading a few books here and there like on the ebooks and uh, it was about summertime and I'd really heard of like audible and audiobooks and uh, as a format of increasing the amount of books and by this time lockdown in most countries was over in my country was over and I was driving a lot more so the ability to read ebooks was actually going down because obviously you can't read while you're driving that's dangerous and uh, my free time was going down as well so audiobooks were looking like a better solution and I did everyone always recommends audible but the thing is it's quite hard to trust a lot of influencers and stuff because a lot of them get this stuff for free and they're not really losing anything by getting these memberships and you're gonna make money for them and also like some of the links in my um, description can be affiliate links as well that's not necessarily a problem but my point is it's so hard to trust anyone's recommendation because they haven't really got skin in the game I'm gonna make another video on this entirely but like it's so easy you see all these sponsorship videos and I'll get this product get that like these people haven't lost any money they haven't had to pay the company's given it to them for free so they're very unlikely to tell you like the problems with it and again like they just use it once and say that oh it's great they're not really going to tell you the problems with it either and so that's why I think people might appreciate this more like honest and uh, authentic review of like the different book processes um, and how they benefited me and actually some of the drawbacks I'm going to talk about at the end. So I'm just talking you through this journey and I probably should have talked through it quicker because you're probably getting bored now. But anyway, so before I got the Audible, the point is, like I said, I wanted to find out if audiobooks were for me before I started committing to a monthly membership. And you do get a free trial and everything, but I would actually recommend, if you want to try out audiobooks, just go onto YouTube, there's, like I said, with any public domain work, so like a book older than 100 years, or sometimes even younger than that, um, any kind of classic, they're all, like, freely, like, the copyright rights don't, if, don't infringe on anyone, so you can republish them as your own, as long as you acknowledge them, so this is why I say you can get free PDFs of them, you get free audiobooks of them, so if you want to try a book, or see if that style of reading suits you, go for these first before you buy any paid membership, that's what I'm trying to tell you, because then you're going to see, even if it's a free trial, because, of course, if you do one month of a free trial, of course it seems great, but, like, try and see, like, do you actually... And also, by doing something for free, less people are incentivized to do it. It sounds weird because you think if it's free, everyone's going to do it. But you can see so many times, like, if you ask, like, a, like people who charge a lot for their course, why do you do that? They say, oh, when I make it free, less people do it. And you're like, why? And it's so true. People take it for granted. So if you know a book is free and you don't click on it, because you've taken it for granted, but if you know it's free and you're like, I really want to see if this like format of book is working for me, that's already a sign that it might be for you and you're dedicated to this. So keep going with it. So anyway, like I said, I listened to some of the books on uh, on YouTube. So I listened to Meditations by like Marcus Aurelius. I love the stoic books as well. Yeah, see, some of these I didn't actually record on Goodreads. So that's why I tell you, like, I definitely went over, like, the three times limit. But I didn't record all of these. But, yeah, Meditations, uh, some of the stoic books. I think I listened to some of, like, the Penguin Glass classics. I think a few of Charles Dickens' books are on there. There's a couple of other books as well, like, um, 
I think How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That's a really good book as well. Everyone recommends it, but very few people actually implement the advice in that book. Uh, but again, the narrators might be better on Audible, especially for some of the free books on YouTube. But just actually get used to listening to, to that process of listening. Because like I said, if you are like in a commute or something and you think, oh, I'm going to listen, and then you end up missing your stop or something, it's better you do that with like a free thing than something you pay money for. And it's better, like I said, to just know that before you sign up to these membership so that's what I would recommend anyway so to cut a long story short by about September I signed up for a free audible membership I got a couple of books on there that I'd always wanted to and um, with audible it's a lot better than YouTube and I'll talk about the reasons why so the fast forward speed is better you can you can like because on YouTube you can only go to like I think 0, 0.25, 0.5. You can only go in increments of 0.25 from 0 to 2. Whereas with Audible, I think you can go up to four times. And um, also, you can bookmark the clips. So if you're listening or something. And you can also do that while you're driving as well. If you have, like, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you sync it with the Audible. And then on the screen, you can just tap the, the bookmark as well. So if there's, like, a particular sequence or something that's going well, you can you can bookmark that and come back to it. So that's really good. Uh, which you don't necessarily get that on YouTube. You can't leave flags or bookmarks on YouTube. So definitely that's better. The quality of narration tends to be better. And also with Audible, there's a couple... So if you have an Audible membership that you pay for or you have a free trial for, you get this thing called Audible Plus and you get a couple of free books included in there. So like I said, public domain works like Charles Dickens and stuff with like a really nice narration. And there's a couple of other books in there. If you want, guys, I will actually do a video on like the top best like Amazon, uh, like the Kindle Unlimited books that I've read and the top 10 best like Audible books that are free included in the membership that don't cost you a credit. The thing is, well, with Audible is... You get like a credit every month and so someone's probably explained it to you before but it's not like Netflix or something where you pay for the membership and that gives you everything. That's not how it works. You pay for the membership that gives you one credit, you redeem that one credit for the book and you get that book to keep forever. So if your membership ends you still have that book type thing. So it's kind of like a you kind of own the product rather than the service type service if that makes sense so that's how it works and that the main benefits i got from this were like ridiculous because i was able to just like skyrocket the amount of books i read and so from like september to like i said by about june july by the end of july it was about 10 books and so you'd predict that by the end of the year i would have read like 20 but like i said it was getting closer to 30 and i definitely think it's over 30 so yeah lots of books i was able to read and lots of books that i'd always wanted to but never been able to like a tale between two cities like it's a really good book but some books are just so slow by like reading whether that's on paperback or by the ebook and when you have a narrator and you just got like a really long drive you've got to do the dishes that you don't want to do great thing to do so I definitely learned a lot from ebooks, and the other thing as well is, so some people might say like, oh, it's all well and good, like you wrote all, you, you read all these books, but like, did you actually like read them? Because if you read through that many quickly, did you actually learn something? So there's different approaches to reading. Some like popular YouTubers would say, oh, don't read the whole book, like just skim to the chapter that interests you. And I would definitely say there's a benefit in doing that, but I would find very often when I did that, like I would skip to a couple of chapters very rarely would I be able to like if I'm really interested in something like the whole topic is really interesting to me it tends to be very rarely that like you know I'm just interested in like one specific question but if you are then I would recommend like just go into that bit but I would find I would get to that bit and then they would usually talk about like an idea or a chapter early in the book and I'd be like oh well I'm just going to go back and read that now. And basically, it would have been more efficient if I just read the whole thing from cover to cover. But I definitely say with textbooks and stuff, like, yeah, go from, you know, just look at the relevant chapters or something that interests you. But, um, yeah, there's different approaches to reading. But I, I would definitely say cover to cover really helped for me. And, uh, yeah, it also, it just really gives you like a base layer of understanding whereas sometimes if you just dive into specific bits that's good too because you get your specific question but then if someone asks you or you kind of think like oh yeah what about that or if you had that if you listen to the whole book you might have got a better base level of understanding which is in my opinion better so I would definitely recommend that and the other thing I did so after I read I, I only really started doing this towards the end of the year because the number of books I was reading was much much more 
I was finding it harder to actually retain the information that I wanted. And some of the books, like I said, with Audible, it was really great because some of them you could listen to for like productivity and some of them you could just listen to before bed. So the stories that I listened to before bed to help me sleep, like I obviously wouldn't like make notes or like things that I wanted to learn from them. Like, if I really picked up something like really worth like, oh yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna write that down. But that very rarely happens. Whereas with some of the books that I wanted to actively listen to, like, yeah, I would I would make that make a few notes. So I wouldn't write a whole summary of the book because there's so many like services that do that already. And if that's what you're going to do, I'd actually recommend those over actually listening to or reading the entire book in itself. But um, instead, I would just make like a key takeaways list. And actually, a lot of the books I've done this for, it's on my website. So if you guys want to just see like some key lessons that I took away that may, might benefit you, I definitely recommend checking that out as well. So that's really what I would say is uh, the main benefits of the audiobooks was like just the passive, the amount of passive time you have in a day, like working, cooking, cleaning, and being able to work, like motivate you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, like clean the dishes. I, I quite like cooking, but I don't like cleaning the dishes. So that was something that it, you just put an audiobook on and clean the dishes easy, like drive time that was filled up, like great things to do. So really, it is for different purposes and different people like I would say if you're like all about productivity and you're making notes on every book that you read I would actually say audible books might not be the best even though because you can you can listen to a lot of books in a quick time I would say the best form of book for note taking is actually ebook because you can highlight everything it's synced to your goodreads if you ever need to come back to it and I think one of the books I'm reading at the moment is called How to Talk to Anyone. I've kind of highlighted all the key summary, like there, she has like a chapter title and that kind of gives away like what the technique is and I've highlighted that and that's on my good read. So if you want a summary of the book, just go there. But the other thing as well is sometimes I'll be listening to a book, like I was uh, listening to Man's Search for Meaning and there was a really great quote in there. And I remember I was like, oh, like... I don't, I don't remember what the quote was. And when it's like an ebook or like an audiobook, sorry, you have to like scroll through the whole thing and be like, what chapter? You can't really search. Whereas when it's an ebook, you can just type in like one, like you just have to remember one word in the quote. I sure if it's like something like that, it's not going to help. But like, I think the quote was, uh, but there was no need to be afraid of tears for tears showed that man had the greatest of courage, the courage to suffer. That's a great quote, guys, side note, by the way. And so I was like, oh, I can't remember what it was. But, like, I just searched, like, tears or courage. And then it, it showed all the search results and I was able to do that. So I would say that the Kindle or, like, the ebook versions, definitely the best way for note-taking. Audiobooks are great for, like, consuming large amounts very quickly or, like, bedtime stories. Or if you've got a lot of passive time that maybe you can't necessarily actively read like if you're driving as opposed to getting a bus or something like that and i would say paperback books they still have like a feel to them that like audiobooks and ebooks they just can't match so i would still say they're good and they're good for pleasure reading and you can also highlight and write on them but like i said the best way is to mix and match both of them but like i said the key thing really was i was able to skyrocket the amount of books i read achieve my goal like and supersede it by like combining all three methods of reading so like the paperback the ebook and the audiobook and like i summed up the best thing was the the ebooks really for the note taking and trying to read more more books if you have time at work or something where you're just sitting there bored on your phone and the audiobooks are a great way of listening to more books before you sleep listening to books in passive time and just like really ramping up the amounts of books you read using that fast forward button so hope you enjoyed that take care peace out follow for more amazing content and if you really enjoyed this video and you're thinking thinking about getting those memberships definitely check out the link below in uh, i've got links to the amazon kindle unlimited on my link tree and also the amazon audible subscription as well definitely check those out guys so take care peace out follow for more amazing content